we know that patients are at higher risk of developing AF after ACS. In the April 22nd issue of Jack, you could read a paper called New Onset Atrial Fibrillation After Aortic Valve Replacement, Comparison of Transfemoral, Transapical, Transaortic, and Surgical Approaches. And I am with Dr. Tanyan Tanawatawat. MD, Johns Hopkins now, but you were actually working at University of Miami Miller School of Medicine when you did the study, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's coming in the April 22nd issue of Jack. Why did you decide to look at atrial fibrillation in aortic valve replacement? Let's start there. I think the population that we study is pretty unique. It's an elderly population who have the degenerative aortic stenosis. And in this patient, because of their age, the incidence of atrial fibrillation is relatively high. The recent study showed that the patient who underwent the um, TAVR is actually have the high incidence of atrial fibrillation as well. And there was a study showing that the transapical aortic wall replacement associated with higher incidence of atrial fibrillation so therefore, we're try, trying to see if there's any procedural factor that can cause of the atrial fibrillation that's related with atrial fibrillation. That's why we study in a different approach of the um, TAVR and also compare with the surgical approach to see the incident of atrial fibrillation. So how many patients are we talking about? So we include actually the whole cohort. It's like 231 that we have in our database. However, we exclude the patient who have the persistent paroxysmal or permanent AFib or any record of atrial fibrillation in the past. So the total that the patient have, we include 123 patients. And 52 of them develop AFib after the procedure. So what did you learn about these patients? So this study showing to us that the patient who underwent a different approach of the aortic wall replacement have the different incidence of atrial fibrillation. The highest is occur in a patient who underwent a surgical approach, followed by the transapical, transaortic, and transfemoral is carry the lowest. Um, the, in the incidence of transfemoral is about 14%. And we also differentiate in, the, in each group in order to see what is a procedure factor. And we found that the patient who underwent the procedure without pericardiotomy has the lower risk of the atrial fibrillation and is associated with about 82% risk reduction of AFib. So what are the clinical lessons you think you can carry out of this? So now it's approaching to the method, how would you do the TAVR? I know that the patient who have the peripheral vascular disease cannot proceed for transfemoral TAVR. The alternative are transaortic and transapical. It might be come back to see that which one is really the better one in order to proceed for that. And then all this population that we study, none of them have received any medication through as um, to prevent AFib after the procedure. It might be something that we would consider to start a patient on some medication in order to decrease the risk, especially in a patient who carry the high risk of AFib. Were you kind of surprised by some anything that you found? Um, it's actually under our expectation that transfemoral is going to carry the, less, the, um, the least incident and also the patient with, with non-pericardiotomy carry the least incident as well because the, we have the theory behind the post-operative atrial fibrillation that sterile pericarditis is associated with that. So I think it's kind of come out as our expectation. And number is relatively high compared with other study. This might be surprised us for a little bit, the number is high. However, when we compare our population with other study, our population kind of elderly. So that's why I think it might be explained. Well, I think it's an interesting paper, and you know, it's in the tw April 22nd issue of Jack. And please go check out the paper for Cardiosource World News. I'm executive editor Rick McGuire.